All right, everybody. d led you want to start us off? Uh, yeah, Coach. Um, how do you all attack the number one ranked defense? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, first and foremost, you know, gone against the scheme before. Have nothing but respect for what uh, Coach McDermott and Coach Frazier do. Um, it'll be a challenge. Um, they're playing well. Uh, they've had guys in the system for a while, and uh, they know exactly how everything's supposed to work. Um, well put together, well coached. Uh, so, yeah, our work's cut out for us, for sure. Uh, and, uh, you know, what makes them number one in pass defense? They don't even have Tredavious over there. Yeah, I mean, it's a credit to just the entire, all the personnel and what they do schematically. Um, you know, they do a good job of limiting uh, your chances for big plays. Uh, they keep the ball in front. They're great tacklers. Uh, they can get after the quarterback. Um, so they limit the opportunities uh, in that way. Overall, though, you see a defense that just plays fast. Um, they know exactly what they're doing. There's no hesitation. Uh, they're good with all their adjustments. Um, so, again, like I said, it'll, it's a great challenge for us uh, to go there to play against a defense that is uh, playing as well as they are. And lastly, how do y'all get the run game going? A lot of guys have been talking about the run game. Y'all got to run the ball up there. It's going to be cold. It's going to be snowy, maybe. Ah, uh, D-Lad, it's, it's like what we grew up in. That weather's easy. Yeah, I know. We're good uh, with that. Football <laughs> weather up there. Yeah. Uh, look, like I've said before, when, when we run the ball, um, sustained runs for, uh, through the course of the year and in times where we haven't had the ability to do that is it goes back to the, uh, to the fundamentals of the positions. And it not just, it's not just the offensive line, not just the running backs, making sure the quarterbacks get us in the right check, making sure the receivers are on the same page and who they're blocking. Uh, making sure coaches from a design standpoint, we're, uh, we have answers for them. So it, not only does it take all 11 there, but also obviously the coaches uh, to put everybody in the right position. And again, uh, each game is a new game. Each, uh, each opponent uh, presents an issue in terms of challenges and how to attack them. And so hopefully we, uh, we have a chance to go there and, and be fundamentally sound and, and see what happens. Thanks, Coach Dave. Thanks, bud. Michael? Hey, Dave. How are you? Hey, Michael. How you doing, buddy? Uh, curious what Jalen May, where do you feel Jalen Mayfield's growth has been this year? I mean, you know, most of us probably on this call are not offensive line experts or played offensive line. So where, where, where is it that maybe the stuff that we don't see that he's grown in? Yeah, I mean, you know, first and foremost, right, he's, he came in as a, uh, a tackle in college. Uh, you know, he played tackle as, as we drafted him, and then we moved him to guard. Um, you see the comfort level each week uh, in terms of working with Jake next to him, uh, passing off different things and coming off the ball with good pad level. Um, at the end of the day, it's gonna, there's no replacement for reps, which equals experience. So every time he goes out there, he's been challenged against really good defensive fronts that he's had to face. Um, and so what we ask, just not just from him, but really from everybody, is to be open-minded in terms of growth and be consistent in terms of what we ask you to do and how you answer it. Um, the reality is, you know, just like players and coaches, we're all striving each day to get better. And I think, you know, as long as you're open to that prospect of getting better each day, uh, you've got a chance, and, and Jalen definitely is. Was he doing that from day one, or did that take time because of all of the kind of movement that he had? in uh you know in training camp. yeah i mean you look at it and you got a situation where again it goes back to the comfort level you know going in there playing guard um working the combinations uh your stance is different than it is a tackle so all of those things play into it and uh each game you know we see you see different things of growth you see at times, there's things to work on, and each week he's taken that challenge. And, you know, as the, se the seasons continue to go on, there's been improvement in, in different things we've asked him to do. There's always things to work on, uh, just like everybody else. And, and again, we'll, this game presents another challenge for him in terms of who he's going against. Do you see his long-term future where he is now? <clears throat> Sorry, where he is now at, at left guard? Or is this a thing where he could end up bouncing back out to tackle at some point? Yeah, that's a good question. I 
Not to give you a cop-out answer, I, I'm just focused on it right now. So this week, right, he's our left guard. Um, and that's where, you know, we've obviously coached him up and, and, and see where it goes from here. Appreciate it. Thanks. Josh? Hey, Dave. Hey, Josh. You mentioned with D-Lad that at every every level you do have some experience with cold weather football. Is there really any difference or do we make too much of a deal out of um, – out of that aspect of it, if it's not a really extreme situation. Yeah, I think it affects, you know, obviously certain positions differently. Um, you know, you can ask, you get a handful of quarterbacks in a room and some guys don't mind throwing a wet ball or, or playing in certain conditions. Other guys, you know, prefer not to play in those conditions. And again, it's about a mindset. It also, you know, once, once the ball is snapped, the last thing that even comes across your mind from any position is the, is the elements. Um, it's the job at hand and obviously trying to be successful. So there is a build up to it. You know, the fact that we're, you know, where we are geographically and we're going up to play a, you know, a game. We'll see where the weather is. It seems like it's changing daily, but um, yeah. the mindset's been great. The reality is wherever we play, we play. And I think guys have accepted that. You will find people that will argue that dome quarterbacks have a tough time when it gets late in the year in adverse conditions. How do you feel like Matt? does in those conditions i know your your firsthand experience is pretty limited yeah sure i mean again i go back to the fact that 14 years um you know different levels of success in terms of his career um it's the last thing i'm thinking about is how he's going to be in those you know those conditions he's a northeast kid uh grew up there so i'm sure he's played a few turkey bowls slash winter uh pickup football and uh, in some bad conditions Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Scott. Hey, Dave. Um, how do you think that? How do you think that uh, Pitts has kind of handled this entire season, just from all the expectations that have been thrust upon him from the outside, and 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 him having to kind of master so many different spots on the offense? How do you think that he's processed everything that that's gone on uh, in his first campaign? Yeah, I think what he's done is. Speaking like I did with Jalen, he had a, he's had an open mind in terms of the growth. He's accepted the things that we've asked him to do. He's tried to uh, do it to the best of his ability. Uh, like I've said before about Kyle, he's very intelligent. Um, you know, he's come in and all he's done is uh, what we've asked him to do. He's worked hard. Uh, he's continued to get better in certain things, even though those things might not show up on the uh, stat sheet. Uh, he's done. He's been consistent in terms of the person he's been, and it, it's. Again, that's all we asked for, and he's done, a, he's done a good job of that. Um, you've obviously seen a lot of special talents, but th th there have been plays over the course of this season. Do you even kind of go, wow, I can't believe that he made that play just with his kind of physical ability? Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's, I think every NFL game, regardless of who's out there, there's usually a play here or there, regardless if it's your team or the other team, that uh, obviously is pretty special or – you say to yourself, there's no chance you could do that, which at now my age, there's no chance I can do it. <laughs> yeah. um, but reality is, you know, it's uh, you kind of come to expect certain things from certain guys. And uh, and again, you see it during practice, not just him, but other players. And again, being the carry over to games is awesome. Uh, but the reality is we, we probably have a decent feel of what we think guys can and can't do uh, as we go through the season. Thank you. D do you have anything to follow up? I'm uh, good. Thanks, Matt. Okay. Thanks, D Led. Uh 929, I see you got your hand up. Yep, it's Tanitra. Hi, Coach Dave. How are you? Hello, how are you? I am good. Thanks. Just a kind of a bigger picture question because I know everyone's dealing with this, right? So taking away injuries that you can kind of manage through or even weather elements uh, like Josh was talking about earlier, but this whole COVID thing, just players, you know, it's it's like moving parts. And so you look at, at Hayden and, and Tajay being on that list and how do you manage through that just every day, kind of almost looking over your shoulders, like who's actually going to be there and available for me come game day? Yeah, that's a great question. I think just the ability to stay flexible. Um, you know, don't be rigid. Uh, you don't know, obviously, it's no different than in a game situation. If you lose a lose a player, uh, you'd like to have contingency backup plans and in those uh, instances where that that does occur. Um, and then during the week, obviously, the last two years, 
probably unlike, obviously unlike anything that's you've gone through, even in society, let alone sports, and uh, just learn to be adaptable. So at the end of the day, whatever is thrown our way, we just have to find solutions. And that's what our players are, are thinking of us as coaches. And so we're just trying to do the best job of doing that. Chris Rim. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Hey, Dave. Um, this Yesterday, Lee was talking about him and Kyle's relationship and how, you know, sometimes Kyle calls him things that, well, Kyle is closer to his kid's age than his age and how um, Kyle calls him things that he doesn't even understand, like, what they mean and the slang and stuff like that. Have you seen their relationship and, like, their back and forth at all? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, bits and pieces, the what they do in the locker room and stuff like that, obviously, no. But, um, you know, Lee's been around. Lee's been around uh, all different types of players. Um, Lee's got a certain way about him that uh, players gravitate towards. Uh, he's got a reputation of that. Um, in different places I've been, you heard of how Lee is with his teammates. Um, no surprise that he's developed a relationship with Kyle. Um, but, yeah, whatever is – nothing surprises me with Lee, put it that way. Where, where does he uh, uh, where does he rank on like the most fun odd people that you've coached or been around? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, a good question. I I don't know if I can give you a ranking, but uh, you know he's, he brings good energy. That is the one thing that I think you know as he's gone through his career, uh, you can see and understand how he's uh, he's affected locker rooms, uh, brought guys together, um, regardless of background, and I think. Uh, you know, there's a reason why he's been playing as long as he have, not just the physical ability. Um, he's got the ability to off the field um, that you look for in a teammate and you look for uh, to bring to your team. All right. That's all we've got time for, guys. We'll have uh, Coach Pease here in just a second.